forgotten truths, sin. The Holy Bible teaches plainly that the reason our world is in degradation is because of sin. God created a perfect world with infinite capacity for good. However, the entrance of sin brought death and destruction. So, today we'll take a look at just what is sin. We learned earlier in the presentation on creation that God made this world perfect. Then he made humanity, one man and one woman. God planted a garden in the land of Eden in which they were to live. In the middle of the garden, God put two trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God commanded the man to eat of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The day that he ate of that tree, he would surely die. One day, as they were in the garden, the man and the woman became separated, and the woman wandered near the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She entered into a conversation with a serpent in the tree. Using lies and deception, the serpent tricked the woman into eating the fruit. In her euphoria, she gave some of the fruit to her husband, and he ate it. The consequences of this act, as stated in the command, is death. The act of sin changed the nature of humanity to one of constant degradation. Therefore, each person born in Adam's line is subject to degradation and is bound by a desire to sin. So, what exactly did this pair do that constitutes sin? The Apostle John makes the definition of sin plain. Sin is the transgression of the law. The word transgress means to go beyond the limits. Therefore, sin is going beyond the limits of the law. Adam was commanded by God to eat of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. By going beyond this limit set by God, he committed sin against God. The consequences of this act is the death and destruction we experience in the world today. Many imagine that the law of God did not exist until Mount Sinai. This is fallacy. The law of God, like its originator, is eternal. Our world was created in an environment governed by God's commandments. God's law declares to us our limits and gives our existence order and purpose. It demarcates the boundaries for life. If there were no law, there would be no sin, because sin is violation of the law. So, what is this eternal law of God? It is the Ten Commandment law God wrote with his own finger in stone. This law is God's law of love that governed all his creation. God's eternal law is summarized by one word, love. This command to love is divided into two, love to God and love to our fellow man. Deuteronomy 6.5, Matthew 22.37-40, Mark 12, 29 to 31. It was written on two tables of stone. One stone detailing our responsibility to our Creator, the first four commandments. The second stone detailing our responsibility to our fellow man, the last six commandments. When we love God, the commandments state that we will not have any other gods before Him. We will not make any graven images or bow down to them. We will not take his name in vain, and we will remember to keep his Sabbath day holy. When we love our fellow man, the commandments state that we will honor our parents, we won't kill, we won't commit adultery, we won't steal, we won't tell lies, and we won't covet our neighbor's property. When God frees us from the bondage of sin, he grants us the capacity once more to live as law-abiding citizens of His universe. Remaining within the limits of these commands will bring life. So, 
In eating the fruit, which of these commands did Adam violate? The command we all break when we commit any sin. The first, thou shalt have no other gods before me. When Adam listened to his wife and ate the fruit, he disregarded God's explicit command and placed his wife in God's position. When we listen to the voice of God's enemy and step outside God's laws, we are putting the enemy in God's place, making him our God. By choosing to step out of the limits set by God, death came into this world. This consequence we see and experience daily. As we take a closer look at what the Holy Bible has to say about keeping within the boundaries of the Ten Commandments, we learn that Jesus said if we love him, we will keep his commandments. The Apostle Paul taught that when we love, we do not harm our neighbor. The details of how these are manifested is seen clearly in the Ten Commandment law. The Apostle John, in his letter to the believers, reiterates that when we love God, we will keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. God's Ten Commandments are the boundaries within which life is sustained. They form a protective barrier around the obedient. God's laws are not tedious or works-oriented. On the contrary, they bring rest, peace of mind, and blessings. Psalm 1 Exiting this boundary by committing sin will result in death. God's law is a law of love. When we cherish sin instead of delighting in God's law, we do not love and our lives are filled with fear. Fear of the known consequence of sin, death. Now that we have reviewed the general principle of exactly what sin is, next time we'll take a deeper look at the consequence of sin, death.